All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. Here we are, this is podcast time. We're in the shop, we're waiting on these nice uh, mini split units to keep us cool. Mm -hmm. Cause it's in the middle of daggum summer. Yep, hot. Fish are not biting. They're not biting. We did just film a video and I'm just telling you, it didn't, it didn't really turn out. They're not biting shallow. They're not biting shallow. Exactly. Like, you'll go offshore, they might Oh, bite. so you're telling me, so the last 20 years in July, they never bit shallow. Cause last 20 years of my life, it sucked in July. No, you need one of these. Well, you need, you need electronics to help you. Okay. <laughs> Imagine going offshore fishing right now. Yeah. Without electronics. Oh, you can't do it. What are you gonna do? That's the ultimate blind casting. You ain't even got a, like a stick to throw at. Ain't nothing out there. There's the same 200 wrecks out there and, and structure that they've sunk. And if you ain't on none of them, you're catching old catfish. You're trying. You're catching hardhead catfish. That tree and that point. There ain't just... no triangulating out there, son. You ain't got no. You can't see where to triangulate. You're just dropping in the abyss, waiting on a shark to eat your stuff. Hoping. Hoping and praying. Not scoping. You're just hoping. hoping. Or you could be on an airplane without any kind of GPS, trying to in the sun. We could go back to them days. Oh, uh, we got all this technology, but don't use it. Don't use it. Anyway, July <laughs> is upon us. It's, dang, it's almost August. I know. The season's almost over. Season's almost over. That's why we're in the shop. It's too dang hot out there and the fish ain't biting. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today in this podcast is very, it's actually very funny. Yeah, I want to I go back through memory lane. I want to recap the season. All right, we're doing a recap of the 2024 Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. Um, and we're going to talk about things that I don't even know what we're going to talk about, to be honest, because there's things that I forgot. Yep. And you know what's crazy is, so we won the first term of the year at Toledo Bend, and it feels like it was yesterday, but it also feels like it was like last year. So my wife always says, like, if for when, and you, you get this with Trent too, the days are long, but the weeks are short. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. The, de the days are, it feels like it takes a long time, but then you look back, you're like, oh, that was, that was only like a week ago. And they're like, no, nah, that's a month ago. I mean, I was launching my boat at Toledo, and it was... 28 31 degrees yeah i know it, it feels like it was forever ago but it and really they were wasn't biting forever oh ago. my gosh they were so they were biting toledo's good toledo was really good yeah it was good it did not we didn't think that it was gonna be good no i, I wasn't on really the championship sure. day tell us about that little so so there's let's a, recap there's toledo. a lot of funny things that happen throughout the season that i don't catch on camera we're gonna recap every tournament real quick yep is what we're going to do. Toledo, we're starting with it. Yep. Tell me about what your recap, what you remember Toledo. I remember my main thing was being in bed. I had the flu the whole time. The whole whole week. Yeah, you was a weakling. B BJ brought the flu in. Shout out BJ, Adrian's camera guy. BJ, shout out BJ. Brought in the BJ flu. BJ rolls in. He's got all this stuff to film at Toledo. And yep. he flies in. He's like, bro, I think I'm sick. I said, well, why the hell are you here? Yep. Me like, I got fish all week. You in here Colin, see it. Colin, shout out Colin, Mark's camera guy. We roomed all together. We were all in the same room in a bunk bed room, right? Two mm -hmm. bunk beds. Me and Colin both got the flu. Like, off the rip. First time of the season, but... Did Colin get it, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was in bed the whole time, too. Luckily, we did. I didn't get it. I was no, sitting there like, I thought y'all had COVID. I thought y'all had the vid. No, I, I'm so used to getting sick on these things that I, I know to stay away from you. Because I can't risk, like... You going down too? Yeah, you need some emergency. Oh, dude, I needed I needed more than that. I needed everything. Like I was, I, I needed everything. But so you had a, a good practice yep. that tournament. Mm -hmm. I felt really good about it. You know how I get after a good practice. I get I don't know about it. I don't like it. Well, you've seen the rug get slipped out. So, yeah. so everybody feels that way. Like everybody's like, oh man, if I catch them in practice, like I'm gonna jinx myself in the tournament. And I have seen it where they poof. Yeah. They did poof. They poof a lot. They poofed in that tournament. Well, I was convinced up through knockout round, we're going to win. Like, this is it. We're going to win, right? Yeah. And I'm using we. Everybody comments all the time about we. You always say we, right? You were going to win, right? So we'll knew, win. Yeah, you always say that. So we'll win. But no, I, I you were going to win that tournament. I knew you were. Yeah. And then I pulled you out of the water, knockout round day, end of day, and you said, all my fish are gone. And it was not all of them, but what was crazy is I went to the knockout round fish. I ran to that same area, mm -hmm. that creek up above the deal. 
I ran up there and I and I cracked them pretty good. I caught 40 pounds. Oh no, it, that that was a really really good starting hole. Yeah, it was really. I mean, for some reason it was really good, and I was like, huh. And in practice, I caught a bunch of pound and a halfers, and I caught some twos in there, and I caught some threes, but there wasn't no real big ones. That was in our practice video. We started there in our practice video. Yep, me yep. and you. Mm -hmm. And 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 never even never even took my boat in there before, but I wanted to find something different, so I went in there and I had some bites, and I, there wasn't no real real big ones. Yep. But you gotta understand that time of year, it it was warming up. Remember, mm -hmm. it started warming during that week, and everybody was like, "Oh man, they're gonna be sliding up on the banks," and I'm like, "Good luck." Yep. Well, anyway, knockout round day, ran in there, caught them real good. And then I told Brett, I said, look, dude, I'm going to go and check a bunch of stuff in practice during the knockout round. Yep. That I'd found on my second day. Yep. I went in there, poof, gone. They're gone. So we knew. There you're... wasn't a bass within two miles of the places that I found. I was like, oh, my God. Your starting hole was going to be okay, but you had really hit it pretty hard. And then it didn't help. A lot of people don't remember this. We had a fog delay championship day, and that cost us like two hours in the morning, which was really when you were. So doing that was when I was doing good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I went back to the house after we got y'all blasted off. I went back to the house. I, I normally watch. I see. I don't watch live. No, you never does. I never do until championship day because for all the haters out there, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I know something that I shouldn't be able to tell you, right? Because you get off the water and you'll start, you just talk and sort of vent about everything that happened that day. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to compromise the situation and accidentally say something that I know that I, you should Well, you know, know you got to protect the house. You got to protect yourself. You got to protect. So I don't the watch live. Integrity of everything. Yeah. Right. Because I don't want to accidentally say something that I shouldn't, right? Well, I mean, if you ask a hater, they're like, oh, I'm sharing yeah, info I, left I or right. I, I know that. time is. for you. So uh, my love for watching live went away when you hired me because I, I, I can't watch it because I, I realized that I could, I could jeopardize the house. So I don't until championship day, typically. So you thought we were going to lose big time. I never turned it on because I knew we were done. I didn't want to watch. I'd get too much anxiety. I just started editing until I checked score tracker about p middle of period two. And then I was like, holy crap. So you're saying there's a chance. He's in first. And we we got a shot. Like, can he hold it on? Because they shortened the day. Yeah. So I was like, can we hold on? Last period was two hours. Remember yep. that? They were like, all right, dead, dead cut off time. In the end period three, I rolled in Toledo smashed. Oh, you rolled into that spot, and it was just every cast almost. It was. It was phenomenal. It was good. It was really good. Like, it was one of the best two a fun, hours. A fun fishing. stat that I always liked from that tournament is if you would have had the full two and a half hours, because you were just short of catching in that last period as much as second place. Yep. So you could have, if you had the full two and a half hours, I firmly believe you would have won the tournament just on that last period. I know. If you had never caught a single fish the day, early mm -hmm. in the day. That's crazy. It's crazy. It That's what you call running into them, having a collision with them. Oh. And what was funny about that, we'll move on to the next tournament here in a minute. I went and fished the mouth of that pocket. Mm -hmm. You filmed it. Yep. During my second day of the tournament. Yep. I started there. That was my first starting spot. I rolled up on it my second day of the tournament. I had already made the cut. Mm -hmm. I'd, I didn't have to catch nothing. I said, well, I'll catch 10 pounds throughout the day. Yep. And so I rolled up. I caught a three-pounder and a two-pounder in there. And the water was still kind of muddy. And I was like, it ain't right yet over here. It ain't right yet. It ain't right yet. Well, I ran up there thinking that it might be good. I was like, maybe it cleared up. And got to my son, I'm just teeny. They was there. Anyway, one Toledo being great yep. tournament. What was next? Santee Cooper. That was a weird derby. It I, was weird. It was good, yep. but it was weird. And, like, here's the thing a lot of people don't realize is I don't know. We don't know these lakes. I've never even launched my boat at Santee Cooper. Don't know nothing about it. I'll roll up in practice. I'm like, all right, well, let me, let me see what this place is about. I knew a little bit about it, and y'all didn't let me forget it. Y'all still bring it up every chance you get. Megalodon, too. Megalodon, too. That's all I knew about it. They were $500. Y'all yeah, still talk about it. I think you get, like, $150 with them. But but speaking of poof, right, and my, my the way wow. practice, practice was amazing. Like, it was really, really good. And well, I found one poof. little area, that, 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 and I really concentrated on that one area, and then I had a couple places that were really good, and then... What happened in that tournament was the water shifted. The, the, yeah. the wind shifted. Yeah. The wind 
blew out a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. The wind, it never blows out of the east. Yep. Ever. It blew so hard out of the daggum east and it blew that creek completely out. Mm. That's just bad luck. That should have been a top 10. And I broke my trailer motor in half in that deal. Yeah, did we should put that in the video? I, I did, because the, shout out Minn Kota. Oh, I have to. I have to shout out Minn Kota. I'm not saying that I blowed that up. You could have had a titanium shaft, so yeah. not a smithereen now. Shout out Minn Kota. You could have had metal off of Space Oddity 96. Well, the thing is, is it actually... And I'd have blowed it up. You blew it up, but it actually held together longer than I thought it should. Oh yeah, and then and then they were they were got you replaced as soon as you got off the water. So I blowed that thing at smithereens. Finished fifteenth place, I think. Still a good derby. Still a good points. Jacob won the tournament. Jacob did win the tournament. We actually stayed to watch Jacob win. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. He I needed wish. some camera guy help too, so I, I pitched in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of unfor unfortunate. He had some unfortunate stuff going on. So anyway, all right, we're gonna move on to Santee Cooper. Hang Great on, tournament. On. One, one thing that they don't know about Santee Cooper. The only thing I want I remember the most. Thommies. Daggum Thommies. Did we film actually, Thommies? No, we never filmed. No, we did because you did karaoke in Thommies. Well, what's funny is I did do karaoke and it's called Tommies. Tommies. Yeah. So Tommies. But um, it's spelled like Thomas with an H. Like with, with an Tommy. H. Yeah. So Jacob was like, oh, we can go to, we was, he was Googling places to eat, restaurants. Yeah. He said, oh, here's Thommies. Thommies. I said, Thommies? What's Thommy got? <laughs> He said, oh, Thommy's got chicken wings. They got daggum steak night. Well, didn't he say he had Live like a, karaoke. See, but Jacob, didn't he say he had like a buddy that was named Thomas, but he always called him Thomas? He called him Thomas. Thomas. Made him so mad. Shout out, Thommy. Thommy. I hope we go back to Santee Cooper. It was a good place. Um, Redcrest was next. No way. It was. Who won that? I don't recall. I think I do remember. Oh, yeah. There's a big old check over there. Happy Gilmore check. Yeah, it was a Happy Gilmore check. Quick fun fact about Redcrest. That that tournament was not easy on me. Mm -hmm. It was not easy in about three different avenues. Number one, the fishing was not easy. Everybody thinks that I just rolled up my home lake and just smashed. Yeah. What well, was just shoe in on him? Mm -hmm. Oh, it should just meant to happen to him. Y'all ain't got a clue. The Dagon River, look, I, I remember... Practice started, let's say it started on a Saturday, mm -hmm. which I think it did. Yeah. So practice started on a Saturday. I remember in here rigging rods that Friday. I stayed in my house that night. Um, I am sitting here rigging rods that Friday. It is freaking dumping. Yep. It rained seven or eight or nine inches. Yep. They cut on floodgates. So they had like eight or ten floodgates open. It was unbelievable. The whole river flooded out. Changed everything, made everything muddy. There was current flowing. It was like, oh man, sounds good, like a dream. But we didn't have the tournament start until like the following Thursday yep. or Friday. Yep. So I said, all right, well, seven days from now, that's this water ain't gonna be the same. So anyway, I go to turn our practice. The second day of practice, I was with you. You were with me, and we had an unfortunate circumstance. I was about to say, I was wondering if you were gonna talk about that. Had a very unfortunate fortunate circumstance. I'll tell you exactly what happened. The water was a little higher than it should have been. And well, I, I'll be honest with you, I was a little. All my whole life, I've always been this way. But I will blame this. So Lay Lake has a bunch of stumps in it, and they had cut these stumps off when the water was down. I went up there and pre-fished when the water was down, and they had all these stumps down. And when you do that, and the water comes up three foot, they're three foot under the surface, but. You're not going to hit them while you're running. You're fine. Yep. But when you're taking off, you might clip one. Well, anyway, I hit one just perfect. And right where my drain plug is on this boat. I still think there was rebar on it. I, I personally think there was rebar on right it. Right where the drain plug is on that corner, I clipped it and it broke my drain plug. Yeah. Broke the drain plug and knocked a little little place out right down there. Anyway, I got uh, Jeremy Wilson to help me out. Yep. Wilson Paint and Bonnie, shout out to y'all. So, the, so, I, and long story short, practice was cut short that day. Yeah, that a lot of people didn't know it. I did not put it out in the practice vlog, but that was the day I was filming with you. And, and it was actually, there were, there were two things that I thought were interesting about it. Number one, we were idling through there and we had talked about me getting your backup boat, like your last year's boat, and chasing you that tournament. And you said, hey, if you go through here, 
just be very careful because there's booms everywhere and boom as you were saying that but i've ran through there a bunch of times i've literally ran on pad through there i know i've ran on pad through there a bunch i know it was and it's just the way that it hit too so we were out you were fishing some different areas and we kicked on your bilge and it just started going and going and going and going. I and said going. we got a hole in bottom boat. But anyway, they fixed the drain plug. It was not a major structural engineering deal. It was nothing to do with trite, and it was just the drain plug. Yeah, it's got just knocked. Where it I hit, hit just perfect. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, tournament ended up great. Won the tournament, kind of unconventionally how I wanted to. Um, I was going to catch them up river and then come back down, and the fish flooded in there. The weather was perfect. It was sprinkling rain. The fish were wanting to slide up in. It had warmed up all week. Mm -hmm. Remember that. And they, it was just a collision with them. Similar, same recipe as Toledo Bend. What blows my mind, and nobody knows this at home, that is you were actually, you wanted to run up river. You so did, bad. You did not want to win that tournament down river. I didn't want to win that tournament you like didn't. that. You didn't. You were really very conflicted. I didn't want to win the tournament like that. I, I was 100% positive that I was going to do Go up river and win the tournament and do it old school and catch them on a spinner bait and a scrounger. I caught them on a freeloader up there with a scrounger and I, I won the knockout round up there. I know, and it was impressive. And there was a the couple, there was a couple of places that had them loaded, and I knew yeah. that. So I had to be very disciplined in that tournament. So we won the tournament. We won the big one. Yeah, but there was a lot of people in the comments that were wondering why in period break, especially after period one, you kept going. <laughs> They were biting really good. You kept going, I, 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 I kind of want to run up river and check. Like, why were you so conflicted? And it's because you, you didn't want to win it win it like that. You wanted to I didn't want to win river. it like that. You wanted to win it in current. Yep. One minute, my wife Pulse. has that and rear-ended. No, we ain't got a pause. Hello? All right, anyway. So that was Red Crest. You, you didn't want to win it that way, but. Did not want to win it that way, but we did. Wow. Thank it, God it, we won it. It was though. convincing, though. Yeah, it was. There was it a was. lot of weight on your shoulders that week. I was, I was. I was really happy for you. That was a special tournament, it just because it was my home lake and all that, and meant a lot, dude. I I wanted to win that one bad. When that came out on the schedule, that was the one. So like mission accomplished. We won yeah. Toledo, and then we won that one. Count me out, rest season, whatever you want to do. Yeah, and no, I was it. It had already been good up to that point, but then it got even. I, I think honestly, the highlight of the year, it actually got better. Stage three, Del Hollow. Stage three, not yep. third tournament of the year, but stage yep. three. Yep, fourth tournament of the year, stage three, enter Trent Man. Oh my gosh, the biggest guy in the world. Enter, enter Trent Man. He wakes up in the mornings now and he's like stretching, he gets that good little stretch. He opens his eyes, he looks around, he says, hello world, I'm Twent. That's what he does. That's what he does? That's yeah. how he talks too. Hello world. <laughs> That's what he does. A twin. A twin. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we had Trent. After that, we went to Dale Hollow. I yep. finished seventh place. Which is really impressive considering you had a day and a half of practice. Had a day and a half of practice. Had to dip out early. Yep. Was a little stubborn that championship day because I, I really wanted to try to win the tournament. I knew I wasn't on the winning stuff. There was a lot of pressure in those areas. But I turned that day around, and I finished seventh, yep. which I should have done way better. But that, Dale Hollow is phenomenal. I will be back to Dale Hollow. Uh, Called him on a mooch minnow mm -hmm. that has just been released at ICAST. Um the mooch minnow, which you guys have seen it. Uh, I've got a pack of them right here. Let's just grab them right here. This is a uh, goby color. Caught them on that. Caught them on that at Redcrest. One Redcrest with that bait. Yep. One Toledo Bend with that bait. That bait's won a lot of money all around. That and the freeloader have won a ton of money. Yep, caught them on that bait. That bait is freaking awesome. It'll be available here soon. So, uh, yeah. I'm gonna hang that. I'm gonna hang one of these packs up. It was in gizzard shad, is what I want it with gizzard shad color. I'm gonna hang one of them up on that trophy. Yep. So for the, uh, Red Crest, but Dale Hollow finished seventh. Great tournament. That was actually the the house was cool. We stayed at right. It did have mice running around the kitchen every morning. It had that, and it had a, a Dairy Queen across the street. The Dairy Queen. I, we got you a cake. Remember, we got you a, a ice cream cake. Probably the best ice cream cake I've had in a long time. And I'm not. A bit, I don't. I can't eat ice cream. Yeah, you're you're like I'm like and lactose taller. intolerant. I've never been diagnosed with that but i'm telling you if i eat ice cream my stomach starts boiling Listen, everything with him is self-diagnosed like you self-diagnose yourself but it is is legit because you can't get a doctor's appointment nowadays well just as the person who has to sit in that chair is you're hanging off the back of the boat it's legit that's real 
I have IBS. It's, it's, you got something. No, they told me at the doctor that one time I went. I said, they said, yeah, you probably got IBS. <laughs> that one time you went. I'm like, all right, sounds good. So anyway. Um, Stay. Jacob won that. So Jacob so, won Dale so Hall. Far, we're four tournaments in. And four you wins. And Jacob have, have won, won all of them. And everybody's mad. <laughs> everybody's big mad. Everybody's big mad. They hate us. Uh, so anyway, go to stage five. Nope. Stage four, tournament five. You follow. Yep. You follow Oklahoma. I was going to say something, but I'm not. Eufaula is actually a really good place. We we got caught up with some terrible weather. Yeah. We went through two tornadoes, yeah. damn near three that day on the water was you. Mm -hmm. The water rose five to six feet. Yep. It was a lot of different variables, and I'm honestly glad I escaped out of there with some decent points. I finished 13th in my group. Mm -hmm. I was one pound, eight ounces out of making the top. 10 in my group. Yep. I've caught a bazillion one eights. Couldn't catch one. Just got tougher on me. I ran around a little bit too much and it was just a tough deal. Jacob missed the cut in that tournament too. Yep. That was one of the rare tournaments where the whole house missed the cut. The whole house missed the cut in that one. Yeah. But when you when you have all those different variables and all that, it just didn't really work out. Um you fall is a good place, but that was when it started was like well, the this water kind of kept sucks. the water kept rising like crazy. And the then whole it started week, falling, and then it started falling, yeah. and we, we just it was tough to it was tough to find them. It was they were scattered out everywhere, and there wasn't like two creeks on the whole damn body body of water that had them. Cause yeah. everything everywhere else blowed out. Well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think people realize where that tournament got won had been fished by a lot of guys, and it didn't even get right until the final day. Apparently, they were not there until the final day. No. It was not. See, I couldn't tell y'all this, but I mean, y'all are, are all anglers. Y'all peep this stuff. Me and Colin, as we were flying drones and stuff to, to get y'all out, because it got one at the launch, right? We were watching the shad spawn right there on the bank. Oh, I was there. watching it too. But there were no bass around it. Oh, no, obviously, when I, mean, I launched the boat. Obviously, was, we can't tell y'all anything, but we're all going. Oh, when I gosh. was launching the boat, I launched the boat right there at that park. Shad spawning all up and down the bank, and I'm just sitting there watching. I'm not against starting right there. I've did it a lot of times. Yeah. I'm sitting there watching. Shad's phone, Shad's phone, Shad's phone. No bass. No bass blowing up on none of them. I'm like, they ain't up in here. That was that was the tournament we booked two houses. I always remember this. And Jacob jacked it, his trailer. <laughs> Go ahead. Jacob did jack his trailer. <laughs> I always remember this. When the water rises, they don't come up with it immediately. It takes them a little time to adjust. It's almost like they don't even know what's up. Mm -hmm. They truly like, I'm good. Yep. They stay at that normal water level like if they're in five foot and it rises five foot and they're now in ten foot they've always did that yeah and then once it stabilizes a little bit or it starts falling they're like wow let's go up here in these bushes yeah and then they finally show up it's like a five-day process before they start showing up they yeah. do that on Alabama river you can go down here and flip trees for days a day after it gets flooded you ain't gonna get a bite yeah so i learned something in that tournament what was next? Well, that's the thing is, is those tough tournaments. That's really where you learn stuff. You real. always learn whether you yep. win or lose. So we briefly talked about Jacob's ordeal, us booking two houses. That that was made the yeah, that was funny. Made the tournament pretty interesting. The next one was uh, actually heavy hitters. It wasn't a stage. It was Garbage hitters. dump. That was that was a toughie. Well, heavy. I'm gonna say something about Florida. I will say this about Florida. Shout out to all my Florida guys out there that that, that love Florida fish. And I do. I love Florida fishing. It's fun. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's so area based in Florida. Yep. So area based. Yep. You can be away from something 200 yards. Somebody's catching 30 pounds, and you're catching nothing. Yep. Or one pounders. And I was like, huh, okay. So I get on a little bite in that tournament in them canal systems and stuff. And I was catching them on a janitor. I was catching them on a drop shot with you. Mm -hmm. I was catching them on a freeloader. And there was like these, these areas where these groups of these fish were starting to gang up. There wasn't any current, but they were still around those areas and you can catch yeah. them. And I was catching them doing that, catching them with some grass here and there, and then catch them on a chatterbait. I went down to Kissimmee and went and flipped a bronco bug and caught a six-pounder. So I was kind of everywhere in that tournament, but 
the deal apparently was up on Toho frogging and doing all that, but the other deal was down there in Cyprus. I love fishing in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. I went out there, I never caught one over three pounds. You want me to tell you what's crazy? It, it, it was so area-based. It was so much luck involved. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Yeah. You, you, looking back on it, so you know the canal that I mean, Coulter, Joe Lee, they were fishing just outside of that, that canal leading into the, the um, mm -hmm. what do you call it, the lock, right? Mm -hmm. You were actually catching a good bit of fish in that canal, like leading in. Yeah. So a couple other guys talked about this on, on their IGs or whatever. They were catching them pretty good in practice too, and those fish slid in, and it set up for that frog bite. Yeah. Nobody really knew how far they slid in though. Yeah, I agree. But well, you were actually on those fish. Those fish just those moved. They moved in those mats. Well, they did slide in. They did. They slid they in. They slid in. Good. Yeah. Congrats, JoJo, on that yeah. one. That was a good um, one. The whole house missed the cut on that one. Yep. Whole Me, house. Jacob, and yep. Adrian. Jacob had the bites to make the cut. He just did put them in the boat. A lot of people don't realize that those tournaments are the most stressful for me. I hate, I've told you this. I hate those tournaments. Mm -hmm. We have to use a league boat, which means I have to rig a league boat every oh, morning with GoPro sticky. It's so aggravating. Resin. I'll be honest. It Make is. sure I get all the cables out of your way. It's Not aggravating. only that, I've got to shoot on the first day. Get it all rigged out, figure out what boat we're in, and then I gotta make you a reel, then I gotta get the day. And your tackle is trashed it's, after that. It's a big ordeal. Because I took my boat down there, we could practice out it. I took all this tackle out, I'm throwing it in this boat, I'm throwing it back in, I'm throwing it in this boat. It's terrible. It's the most that tournament, tournament was a joke I, to me. I, heavy hitters is the most stressful tournament for me, for sure. And y'all y'all's tackles all over the place. You don't know what you got anymore because it's just strewn over and unbelievable. Everywhere. What was next? Uh the next was Chowan, I believe. Is that right? Chowan's a cool place. Yeah, Chowan. Shout out to all the Chowanese people. Chowanese, yep. Shout out to all them. All the Chowan folks that came out. That was a big event. We cool. appreciate y'all. Thank you again. That's a cool river. And I don't care how I catch them, whether it's on active target on brush piles. I did do that. Catching them cranking or on trees with a pig stick. That river is unique. Yep. It's special. Y'all got a special place there. I finished third place there. I was catching them on a Maverick. I actually have a couple Mavericks right here. Let me see if I have the color. No, I used all the ones with the cover. This is the Maverick that I caught them on. Um, not this color, but the Maverick 110. That bait right there. Snapping it around brush piles. Uh, there's quite a few guys throwing a jerk bait. Jacob caught them on a Maverick too. But what's cool about this bait is, I'm gonna take this sucker out just real quick. Throw this in there. I've always thrown, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I just started throwing this. This bait's really new. But I've always thrown, you know, all the traditional jerk baits, all different brands. You name them, I've thrown them. I promise you, I've thrown the old Rogues. I got them up here. This bait's cool. And the reason why I say that, it has a magnetic, a magnetic, oh, it's already down, my bad. And it goes down. There it is. So, and then it comes back, and I can throw that sucker a mile. But it also comes with red line hooks on it. I never even changed my hooks out. Whole week. Freaking awesome. Red lines are, look, you ain't gotta change a red line. Bro. You change to a red line. That's just what you gotta do. Them suckers are sharp. Feel that, feel that one right there. It's gonna get me. Yeah, he'll stick, oh, it's sticky. What if I, what if I did there then? I'd quit. What if I just had a knee jerk reaction? Yeah, I, I. Uh, anyway, uh, call him on a jerk bait. Pig stick, call them brush piles, isolated wood, isolated stumps to have them use the active target. Call them on a janitor the final day, finish third place. Great tournament. That was a unique tournament. So, so that was one of my first legitimate tournaments fishing around barnacles. Yep. Can I cuss? Go ahead. Can you, can you bleep this? I can. <laughs> I don't feel like I should say it. F a barnacle. F a barnacle. I'm not even going to F barnacles. F barnacles. F them. I can't deal with them. I can't deal with them. They're, they're, they're terrible. So anyway, move along. What was next? Hang on. One, one quick thing about that tournament. So that tournament for me was my favorite tournament this year. I know it was. Do you, do you know why? Because they had Mellow Yellow. They, well, there was one place that had Mellow Yellow, but it was the baseball stadium. So we, because we double booked. What was the name of them? That is it the, Eddington or Edenton? Eddington. Eddington Steamers. 
the Eden, shout out to the Edenton steamers. Y'all had a good hot dog too. I ate that chili cheese dog. I know so, y'all know what's up. We're, cause, because we double booked at, at Oklahoma, we got that place late and we were right there on Main Street. And we were kind of worried about it, like, oh gosh, like we're right here, all the boats are gonna be exposed. First night we were there, fireworks started going off. We thought it was gunshots. Yeah. You remember? Thought I was in Chicago. Right. We were like, where are we at? Like, we're, are we in a bad part of town? It turns out that town is lovely. There's not, there's no like crime lovely. in that town for real. It is a lovely little town. It is. It's sweet. It's a and, nice little East Coast town. But then we saw that, that stadium. I said, guys, I think it's a baseball stadium. I went and looked it up and it's like the deal. It's like the spot where everybody goes. Yeah. It was a lot of that fun. That was the deal. I went there twice. Like we, I just uh, left y'all night too. I just went went myself. And y'all well, that's there. cool to enjoy the, the culture. Not it the is. culture, but the local attractions like, yeah, and the yeah. local stuff yeah. when you go to a lake because we're only going to these rivers and streams not streams but lakes of that area yeah. i never get to enjoy the local yep. side of everything a ton of history there too just because it's right there on the coast yeah North that's Carolina. right one oh, it is cool. One of the first 13 colonies, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The history was... buff in me was, was wigging out. It was cool. Yeah. You enjoyed it. You finally settled in and, and got a little culture around where you was at. Yeah, I did. I, I liked it. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, the very next tournament was like, in as a crow flies, right above it. Yeah. Richmond. Yeah. Richmond, I consider it a successful tournament. Yep. Stage, stage six on the Chickahominy. <laughs> Stage six on Chickahominy River. It feels like it was yesterday. God the mighty, I'm so glad I ain't launching on that sucker. I bet the tide's high as dope right now and they ain't biting nothing. James River. Yeah. Uh, that, you were, You said F barnacles. I say F a tide. I, Bro, there's too, too many, many changes. Variables. Too many variables on that tidal stuff, man. Too many variables. James River, I, I really appreciate you. James River is legit, by the way. Yeah. It's freaking got them at low tide. But you got to hit it right. You got to hit that tide right. I'm just telling you. And I'm going to tell you something else. For all my guys at Fish Tournaments, that Chickahominy River has got them. And they some biggins in there. I called Five Pounder of you. I mean, it was, it was a fun tournament. Yep. But the pressure really got them fish hard. And I broke off some good ones on barnacles. And I lost a few fish. I, I should have easily made the cut there. Missed it in 11th place. Got knocked out. I was pretty disappointed with that. Yep. James River was a success to me. It was. I mean, I that was one of my first titles. Like, I'm not very, I'm not very knowledgeable about tidal fisheries. I fished in Mobile. I fished Sabine River. I'm not. I don't. Re I do now. I don't. I never really understood tidal places. Like, what was better, lower tide, higher tide, moving tide up? As long as the water's moving, I think you're good. But once it gets high tide, them fish spread out, and you got to either A, run the tide, or fish through it. Yep. So I was happy with that. I was. That house is a little whack. So do you remember the house? I mean, it was only a few weeks ago, but the house oh, had we one, could, you one had to pull AC. You beside the house. Yep, it had yeah. one AC unit, so the upstairs was always blazing hot because it was 100 degrees while we were there. Yep. No, everyone's going to forget that. But it oh, was my 100 God, it was 102 degrees. So upstairs was like 90 degrees, downstairs was freezing. We didn't really have, it was. It was, looked like a big house, but it wasn't. It wasn't no, a big it was house not that big. When I slept, I sleep on an air mattress, so I'm not sure where we go. My lower half was in the kitchen, my upper half was in the living room. It wasn't that big, which I ain't saying we need a big house, but that pull around, that driving around, doing all that. Yep. Restaurant wise, I wasn't very impressed. Actually, the crab place was good. The crab place was good, it, I, I still feel like we dodged some bullets getting there. 100%. It we was, were at a sketchy side of town. It was a sketchy side of town, but it was good. It was. It was great it was food. Really good. I really enjoyed it. Job. Shout out Boy. Richmond. I'm not a big fan of the rich men north of Richmond. No. 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 Tell them to F off, too. F them. Too. F them, too. F yeah. barnacles and rich men north of Richmond. You want to tell you what blew my mind? And I had to, I had to shout out. Uh, Justin Martin. I had to text him while we were in the water in practice. The duck blinds. There was a duck blind every five feet. Hell of duck blinds on the East Coast, man. That's the Eastern fly, by, fly pass. I, I, I didn't fly, flyway. That. I yeah. always think of Arkansas. Nope. Eastern fly, flyway. It's crazy. That and then little small crabs. Yeah. Tons of fiddler crabs. Fiddler crabs. Shout out below if you've ever seen fiddler crabs. Because I've seen them and I was like, Oh my God. You don't even know what they are until you see them. Uh-uh. All right, so we're gonna fast forward from James River 
Yeah. What's coming up next? Is this going to go before? No, this is this is right before we leave. So this is right before the travel vlog. St. Lawrence River is coming at you next. It will be by far the best tournament of the season. Nobody's paying attention to bass fishing right now. There's always been this big misconception about smallmouth fishing. Yep. Comment below. I understand smallmouth fishing is very regional. There isn't smallmouth fishing everywhere. It's only like in certain states. We got some smallmouth in Tennessee. Yep. And then you honestly got kind of got to go to like St. Clair, New York, Michigan, basically northern. Well, the James actually had smallmouth. Yeah, it was just off limits. Y'all had to go up further. Yeah, up there's further. some rivers and creeks and streams that's got them. And there's a few little select lakes in between there and there. But like normally, smallmouth predominant. You gotta up get north. up. Yeah, you gotta get up north. You gotta get up north. Relax, yeah. all that. Yeah. Everybody used to think that, that nobody paid attention to bass fishing in the summertime, which I don't think they do. Uh, uh, that so that's been my theory of watching YouTube analytics too. Uh, I don't awesome. think y'all care about bass fishing this time of year. That's why this video isn't going to do I don't, very good. Not many people are going to see it. I don't think it's a smallmouth. I think it's the time of year. I also think it's people. It's, are, it's too. It's too damn hot to go fishing. Yep. Yep. I think it's regional too. And also, the whole if you're anywhere below Pennsylvania, it's so damn hot that you don't want to fish in August. Yep. Point blank period. Yep. So then, guess what? Other things on your radar. Yeah. Like hog hunting at night. Stuff like that. Oh, I was not thinking that during summer. But yeah. Or you could be playing Fortnite. No, I, I thought you were talking about like going to Panama City Beach and sitting on the beach drinking beers. Something like that. That's Ass in the sand. That don't sound bad. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's where I want to be. Um anyway, so St. Lawrence River, St. Lawrence River is next. I had a really good history there. I've caught a lot of big fish there. My biggest smallmouth ever has been tied there. Caught a six five there two year three years ago. And then I caught a couple more sixes on my lax. I've never caught one over six and a half. I've never been there. I'm pretty excited about it. St. Lawrence River, most beautiful place. You it's by right? far, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Other than this Coosa River. That river is my favorite place in the in planet Earth to go. I love that place. And just know, we gonna catch them. It's gonna be fun to film. You wanna tell you what I'm most excited about? What? The 23 hour drive. It's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take a while. Hey, by the way, we're gonna have a travel vlog up, coming up soon. Mm -hmm. My brother is flying up. We're gonna film some videos. Yep. We're gonna incorporate him in the travel vlog. Yep. Um, a little bit. He's going to be in a, a little bit, but for the most part, we're going to take a break. So a lot of the content after St. Lawrence is going to be like us just being us up there, having a good time. So if you yeah. enjoy laughing and fishing, if then you're that's into be like having stuff. a good time, well, I'm not getting no in educational. You're not getting anything educational for me. I'm not telling you how to tie knots. It's strictly good times, positive vibes, no negative vibes, no controversial bull crap. I am going to include some active target footage in there, though. Oh, that, God, don't tell them that. that. There'll that, be a lot of people run away. The, the OGs that are here, they're not going to run away. They're going to want to see it. Well, we appreciate all the OGs. And if yeah. you're a, a new G. A new G. Uh, if you're a new G, you probably like active target. If you're an OG that don't like electronics and you like starting a fire with two rocks and a stick, <laughs> enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. I don't, I'm not doing it. Uh, so, lighter. That, yep, that's me. 100%. Um, all right, y'all. Appreciate you tuning in. This season, I'm going to grade it so far. Out of 10, 10 out of 10. It has. We're, we're third in points right now. Third with, points. With, with a shot. There, there's a chance. There's a shot. We got a shot. 30 something, 35 points back, 30 points. It should have been way less than that. I've had some. Kind of weird things going. Like you fall, should have easily made that cut. I, See, but we're complaining about a 13th place or, or, or what, 26th. A 13th overall, or 13th 11th in your, in your group. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's I what it I, takes with this group of anglers. Though. I'm not a big fan of how they got that now. I'm going to be honest, straight up. Yep. I'm not, bi I'm, I'm not biased toward MLF. I will say that. Yep. I will throw a little bit of negativity in there. I don't like how they did that. Because if I lose one good fish or if I'm one, one pound, eight ounces out, I don't have an opportunity to even try to win the tournament. It used to be the top 20 in your field. You, it was legitimate. In your field, you have 
you have to beat 50 percent of the guys to yeah. advance so th across the board it was top 50 advances top 50 advances you move along can, can i say what i think is a little silly about it what it is you finished 11th in your qualifying group right mm -hmm. you you got paid that was your check got right paid. jacob finished I think first or second or something like that in his qualifying group. He went on to the knockout round, finished 11th, did not make the final day, got the same check you got. He had a whole nother day of expenses, fished a whole nother day. He stayed in the Airbnb another day and did all that. A whole and then day of expenses, gas for the boat. Gone away from his family another day. Same check. I, I think that's silly. That, that, that needs to be fixed, I think. The only way it's going to get fixed if there's more money put into it. I know, but, but you, you, I, you can't miss guess we got to pay more entry fees no, <laughs> uh, no but, but that's that, a whole other subject that, that's, if you fish an extra day you should get you should get compensated for that. at least you, 500 you, bucks you made the extra right like even if it's you take two thousand so instead of ten thousand if you make the money cut you get eight well, well we come out good because we didn't have to do them extra expenses and we got to go home i know that's what i'm saying we got to leave a day early and we got the same I got check i'll see trent man no no big guy you got to come home and see your babies. I did, and and I enjoyed that. I really wish we would have been there. I mean, yeah. we were just a few ounces out, but part of it. It is what it it's is. It's been a nine to ten out of ten for me. The, this season has been great. We're going to St. Lawrence. It's going to be phenomenal. We're going to go to Ontario. We're going to fish. We're going to catch some big smallmouth, and that's going to wrap up this season. This one last tournament. We got one last hoorah to make history and maybe have a chance at three wins this year. Yep. So and there's a chance. And then I'll go into depression I got a, mode. Depression? Depression mode. That's we always go into depression mode. When these tournament seasons are over, we both go, because it's like a whole different life change. Yep. We go from freaking getting it wide open. Oh, yeah, everything's getting it. We're, we're wide open. We're traveling. We're fishing. We're trying to get things. We're working. To then in August, wah, wah, wah. And it's like, what do I do with my life? I know. I, I know. No, I know. Well, let's start cutting grass. Oh, wait. Everything dies in the fall anyway. You can't even cut grass. What are you going to do, cut leaves? You'll go hunting. Oh, the leaves don't even fall till November, so we can't cut leaves. Yeah. I'm going to go deer hunting. You'll go deer hunting. 100%. Shout out to all my deer hunters out there. Y'all putting out cameras. I know the corn's getting up high. I'm excited about that. I'm dreaming about cooler weather. And right now, I'm going to go get some food. I'm hungry. Yep. Good podcast, buddy. Great podcast. I appreciate you, Brett. Yep. Y'all be sure to... Uh, Thank my guy. He puts a lot of effort into the channel. His name is Brett. It's not Ben. <laughs> ben? What do they call me? Ben? Brent? God with an N. Brett. B R E T T. Thanks, Brent. 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 Yeah, I get Brent a Brent, lot. Brent. Ben. I got Ben the other day. That was funny. Shout out, Ben. No, it's Brett. B R E T T. I appreciate all the hard work you put into the channel. Thank y'all. Thank, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you, Brett. I'm going to eat lunch. St. Lawrence Forever Travel Walks coming at you next. Peace.